the defense has been taking in the last few weeks. Can you just talk about that and also, in particular, the run defense as well? Uh, well, Antoine, we're just, you know, there's been, I don't know, we, the biggest thing is we've been consistent being inconsistent. Um, but we've had some players, at least the last two games, um, playing together for the first time over a course of a time. So that that's part of it, um, you know. You know, last week against NC State, I thought we did a better job for the most part in the run game. Um, you know, there was a lot less seams uh, late in the game um, as things were getting a little bit towards the end. We let a few balls get out um, that, that didn't help it. Um, but overall, I thought our effort was playing better up front. Um, and I thought our fits were a little bit tighter. Christine from 247. Coach Fuller, two quick questions. The pitch and catch to the middle of the field, why does that continue to be so easy for your opponent? And secondly, what's your philosophy on press coverage specific to the team you have at your disposal? Mm -hmm. uh, which the pitch and catch on the third down? Uh, in general, with just the, the success that uh, Dare Thomas had to the middle of the field that NC State seemed to have with matching up with Gainer and then attacking open space. Yeah. Well, sometimes when, you know, Amari's out there over the slot, you know, sometimes he's a run player, sometimes he's a pass player, sometimes he's a blitzer. Um, you know, a couple of those ones with Amari are just bang, bang plays and they're contested. You know, there were some times that we're bringing, you know, plus blitz. And, you know, usually on the plus blitz, the ball's going to get out in about two seconds. Um, so you put your guys in position to play either the fade or the slam. Um, and then there's screens that you got to be all rally to, too. So, you know, so it is just – guys that haven't been out there much and weren't ready for that moment, you know, whatever, you know, whether it was a good route, whatever it all was, but obviously we don't want to give up direct throws, especially in pressure situations. Um, but, you know, for the most part, we like to be a press um, a good amount and, you know, the boundary we're in a lot to the field, usually based off a split. Sometimes, sometimes it's based off a matchup. Sometimes it's based off a of coverage. Um, so, you know, Depends on what DBs you get out there and how it's all playing. But yeah, I mean, the more challenge we can make, the better we're going to, we're going to feel. We just got to be more consistent with when we're in that position um, to be confident enough to play the technique that is supposed to be being played. Uh, I don't know if anybody on this call has been in a defensive meeting room or, or, or played uh, even organized football and defensive back. Um, could you just help us in terms of like, when a, when a play is called, and, and so the safety, w w is his responsibility based totally like, okay, this is the play call, and so I should need I need to do this, or is it more based on what he's seeing and reacting and how much of that is based on his experience level? And um, Does that make sense what I'm asking? Like, uh, like I, I think we understand like in an offensive play, like, okay, this is the route I'm supposed to run, or this is the – but on defense, since what they're doing in some cases is reacting, and what I'm speci speaking specifically about is, so on, on a play where it's maybe it's third and goal or third and long, and, and if there's a blitz, but as observers, we see the safety not come up and, it, and, the, and they are able to complete a pass. Is that, does he, is that based on him and his knowledge of the overall situation or there's a call made and he's, supposed to know to, to expect that. Does that make sense? Yeah, that the second half makes it a little bit more sense, Ira. <clears throat> I mean, sometimes when I'm in coverage, especially with the safety, and there's a blitzer in front of me, you know, there's usually a leverage that you have to take, right? You're either going to be inside or outside leverage based off of do I have help or do I not have help? Um, you know, usually offensive players, and then your leverage is usually based off of the call and then the split of the receiver, you know, the – um, and you want to play with proper leverage just so you understand what you can initially take away, knowing that when I'm in a leverage, you know, if my skill and that skill of the receiver is equal, like I need to take a leverage to know what to take away. And if they're going to run away from that leverage, then that's the one that you just got to tackle if it's a great throw and catch. Um, now, if you're a wide receiver, usually if you want to run an inside breaking route, somebody takes inside leverage, you're going to try to push and get them off your leverage, whether that's your speed, whether it's you trying to stick them and get them off of the spot. Um, and those are the things that you need to learn as a DB sometimes to be patient through your leverage, um, but aggressive enough that you can defend the route. You know, so it's a couple times 
you know, you should be in this leverage. The wideout runs the route and gets you off of your game or off of your leverage at that point. Um, and that's not something that we want to happen. Um, you know, and sometimes, you know, listen, we're putting some guys, you know, especially at safety, some guys in positions that maybe they were doing the other thing for the first six months and now they're doing this thing, whatever that all is. So, you know, we're just trying to, in a perfect world, you're repping the things that are going to happen in the game constantly and you're learning from your mistakes in practice. Sometimes you see guys get moved around and you got to put other guys in there. Um, and now the reps are happening. They've taken them, but they haven't taken them maybe at that spot. And, you know, you hate to learn through game experience sometimes with some of those bang, bang plays. Um, but sometimes that happens. You know, and you want to learn when the mistake gets made in practice, not when it gets made in the game. Um, but if that answers your question, just you're always going to have a leverage um, and you got to trust the leverage in order to make the play within that leverage. First, thanks for indulging me on that. Um, uh, on the uh, clarifying the question, <laughs> on the the, uh, the defensive front, it seems like Josh and, and Janaris have had some more frequent bright spots, and and you know I know and uh, Josh hasn't come through with the sacks, but it seems like he's affecting the quarterback more. How close is he uh, to to being the guy that you guys expect him to be? Uh, he's getting there. You know, um, I think he'll even admit <clears throat> there's still things that happen to him that. You know, he wants his re we we and he wants his reaction time to pick up. Um, but as far as just when you have this and it doesn't matter what happens, you go do this. He usually he plays a good pad level, plays fast. I mean, I love everything about Josh. You know, I think at this point, you know, everybody's banged up. He's playing through all those things, but first time in his career, he's got to play through some games now. Um, so I think that's helped his development. You know, there were a number of times last week that. You know, we've got pressure and we, we're just not finishing the play back there or the balls out before you get there. You know, so, you know, sometimes it's hard. You know, I've had defensive ends come to me and they're frustrated about their statistics because they got hurries and not sacks. And then next thing you know, you look up three games later, they got six. You know, so hopefully that happens for him. Um, and, you know, I, I am happy with his development, the way he's going about his business. You know, J-Rob has been more consistent in the run game. I think he's always been a very good pass rusher. Um, the numbers aren't always there, but he did affect the quarterback. I know he had the one sack early, um, but, you know, I think J-Rob's consistency, especially just staying at the one spot, has helped him. Um, it's still an everyday challenge, you know, in the run game to continue to play with the proper pad level for him. But he he's, he's welcoming to be coached, um, both myself, Coach JP, and Coach Hagens, you know, so I think they've both taken steps this year uh, for different reasons, but I do like their development. I do like the way they're playing right now. <clears throat> Coach Norvell said that uh, Akeem Dent, uh, I guess, is uh, trending well. He was a game time decision. I guess same thing with Ronaldo. What, what sort of flexibility do you have if, if Akeem returns? Is he one of those guys that can line up in the slot maybe and, and not leave Amari out there and something that's maybe not – you know, in his wheelhouse? Yeah, I mean, in a perfect world, you, you have more than two corners ready to play so that you can put some more in there. Um, you know, but obviously, I mean, that happens during the course. You get nicked up. You got to put other guys out there. Um, so we'll see where Akeem, Akeem is here as we progress through the week. Uh, it'd be great to get him back. Um, and we got to see how that works. Coach, you said a few weeks ago that this season is a book. And so now I'm not going to get as abstract as Ira because I don't have as big of a brain. But what chapter do you think we are this season? Like, where do you think this narrative is going? And just overall, where do you see that metaphor right now? Yeah, well, when I meant that, I meant just each week is a chapter. and You're trying to, you know, build off it <clears throat> as it comes. You know, we've had a lot of characters in this book. You know, we've had a lot of people involved in it. Um, and, you know, I think as a coach and as a defense coordinator here at Florida State, you're trying to make sure that every moment um, is an improvement or a learning moment. Um, and, you know, we've had more pain than success right now, but we're trying to make sure we don't lose, first of all, grateful for the opportunity, you know what I mean? And make sure the players understand that, listen, I know the record isn't what we want, but like unbelievably grateful for the opportunity to coach you guys and to do this together you know, but you were trying to get more consistent results and we're just trying to make sure that whether it's 
in the bed, whether it's third down, whether it's a man coverage technique, whether it's a leverage on the passer, whether it's coming up on a scramble, you're just trying to put together these lessons to make sure that we don't repeat these mistakes. Um, so, I mean, when I meant that, it was just each week is a different chapter and you're just trying to make sure that you're developing the stories that goes on in a, in a way that you're able to learn through it. Um, and some of that learning has been, you know, playing multiple positions. Some of it has been playing multiple combination of people. Um, so we're just, I mean, it's constant. We're still working through it. I'm doing the best we can to make sure that we grow from it. Uh, two, two questions. So Derek doesn't have to say my name again. One is um, Josh right, Ripley. They said you had a very large. Brain. Yeah. Correct. Whatever that comment was. So it's just, it's just a skull that's big. The brain is um, the Josh Griffith's availability. We haven't seen him much lately. And then also, um, with, with an offense like Clemson's where they've got so many different ways to attack, um, does it, how difficult does that make in terms of game planning when it's not like you can take away this one, their bread and butter, this one thing? It doesn't seem like that anyway. Yeah. Um, you know, Josh has been banged up. We're trying to get him back. He's working his butt off to be back. Um, you know, there's a, you know, he was a true freshman that played a good amount of snaps early in the year. And then, you know, just – it gets banged up in the year. You know, it's a long year for these guys that are true freshmen that come in and play and work through it. But, uh, you know, Josh is, Josh is a good player and Josh is somebody that we're counting on getting better and being a positive contributor to this program here as we move forward. Um, you know, one thing about Clemson, you know, they're good at a lot of things because they got good players at every level. You know, I mean, whether you say O-line, obviously the quarterback, the tailback, the wideouts, you know, they got good tight ends. So, I mean, it's an offense because – if you lean something one way or the other, you know, there's another thing that can kind of break you going the other way. So, you know, just, you know, listen, they've been together for a long time. That quarterback's been in that system. The coach has been there for a long time and they played at a really high level and they've got talent all around them. Um, you know, we saw what the backup quarterback could do the last two weeks. So, I mean, it's a, it's a good program, you know, and from offense, defense, the special teams, they play off of each other. Um, They've been successful with all three sides of the ball and they've got good players. They've got good coaches, consistency within that program, and they've done a great job. It'll be an unbelievable challenge. All right, last one will be Adam. I guess this kind of goes back maybe to, to Ira's question earlier, but just in terms of like your guys' play calls on defense, is it a pretty all-inclusive play call um, or, or is there sort of like shades of gray where – I don't know, in a certain, you know, call the safety's guy line 15 yards off the ball, no matter what, but, but do they need to have like the situational awareness to realize it's first and goal from the, from the eight and to, and to not be maybe so far back? Uh, is there that sort of cohesive understanding of a play call and it, that that's what it is or uh, do instincts and, and, and sort of things need to come into play and, and, and quick adjustments by the player themselves? Yeah. I mean, there's always quick adjustments that need to be done on the fly. That's, because there's a lot of good athletes moving around in space, but we try to be really specific in our language uh, before each play, especially on third downs in the red zone, uh, when we want to play tight, when we want to play off, um, you know, and sometimes, you know, you do it and, you know, just like, you know, you explain it in the call, you put it in the call, and then sometimes in the moment, you know, guys freeze, and that happens sometimes, but, you know, there's very much, um, in the red zone, third downs, um, first down, second alongs, you know, whether it's within the play call or calls or signals being put in before the call that let them know the situation so they know the tools they can use within the down. Um, I think that that is something that um, we think is very important and we continue to emphasize it. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> Thanks, guys. All right, next up will be Sydney Williams.